Hello, everyone. Welcome to Empower English Readers. We present the short story Uncle Abraham's Romance by Edith Nesbitt. Retold by Mina Morris. My dear, I'm sorry to say that nothing romantic ever happened to me, my Uncle Abraham replied. Unless. But no, that wasn't romantic either. As an eighteen year old, I was enamored with the idea of romance. My uncle Abraham, on the other hand, was old and disabled. When I noticed a miniature portrait hanging by his chair, I gazed at it, admiring the woman's beauty. She had large, luminous eyes. And a perfectly oval face, even in the tiny painting. I stood up to take a closer look at the portrait, which I had seen many times before. As a young child, I would ask my uncle who the woman was, and he always responded with the same answer A lady who died long ago, my dear. As I looked at the portrait again, I asked my uncle, Was she like this? Who? he inquired. Your. your romance! I exclaimed. Uncle Abraham stared at me for a moment before finally answering, Yes, very much like her. I sat down on the floor next to him and pleaded, Please, won't you tell me about her? There's nothing to tell, he replied. I believe it was mostly just fanciful thinking and foolishness, but it's the most real thing that ever happened to me in my long life, my dear. There was a long silence. I chose not to speak, remembering the proverb, Hurry no man's cattle. Especially when dealing with older people. I remember, he said, his voice taking on a dreamy quality that promised a good story to come. I remember when I was a young man and I felt very lonely. I never had a girlfriend, and since I had been lame since I was a young boy, the girls used to laugh at me. He let out a sigh before continuing. So I got into the habit of wandering off by myself to lonely places. One of my favorite places to go was the churchyard that sat high on a hill in the middle of the marshland. I liked it because I never encountered anyone there. It's all in the past now. I was a foolish young man, but I couldn't. Stand hearing rustling and whispers from the other side of the hedge, or maybe even a kiss as I walked by on a summer evening. Well, I used to go and sit all by myself in the churchyard. It was always sweet, smelling with thyme, and stayed light much longer than the marshes because of its elevation. I used to watch bats flit about in the red light and wonder why God didn't make everyone's legs straight and strong, among other foolish things. But by the time the light faded, I had always worked it off, so to speak, and I could go home quietly and say my prayers without any bitterness. On one hot August night, after watching the sunset fade and the crescent moon grow golden, I was just stepping over the low stone wall of the churchyard when I heard a rustle behind me. I turned around, expecting to see a rabbit or a bird. Instead, I saw a woman. I and my Uncle Abraham both looked at the portrait. That's exactly how she looked, he said. I also nodded in agreement. I was a bit scared when I saw her for the first time, he continued, and I must have said something because she laughed and asked me if I thought she was a ghost. 
We talked over the wall of the churchyard until it got quite dark and the glowworms came out in the wet grass. I saw her again the next night, and the next, and the next, always at twilight time. And if I passed by any couples leaning on the stiles in the marshes, it didn't matter to me any more. My uncle stopped speaking again. It all happened so long ago, he said slowly, and I'm an old man now. But I remember what it feels like to be young and happy, even though I was always lame and the girls used to make fun of me. I don't know how long our meetings lasted. Time seems different in dreams. But eventually your grandfather said I looked like I was about to die and he was going to send me to stay with our relatives in Bath and take the mineral water treatments. I had to go, even though I didn't want to. I couldn't tell my father why I would rather die than go. What was her name, Uncle? I asked. She never told me her name, and why should she? I had enough names in my heart to call her by. Marriage. My dear, even then I knew marriage was not for me. But I met her every night, always in the churchyard where the yew trees and lichen, covered gravestones were. That was where we always met and parted. The last time was the night before I left. She was very sad and more precious to me than life itself. And she said, If you come back before the new moon, I'll meet you here as usual. But if the new moon shines on this grave and you're not here, you'll never see me again. She put her hand on the yellowed, lichen-covered tombstone against which we had been leaning. It was an old, weather-beaten stone that bore the inscription, Susanna Kingsnorth, died 1713. I said I would be there, I replied. Are you sure? she asked with a serious tone. I promise, I assured her, and we parted ways. After spending almost a month with my relatives in Bath, I was going to return home the next day. As I was going through a case in the parlor, I stumbled upon a miniature. For a moment, I couldn't speak. Finally, I asked with a dry throat and a heart pounding with excitement and fear, Who is this? Oh, her, my aunt replied. She was engaged to someone in our family many years ago, but she died before they could get married. They say she was quite a beauty, wasn't she? I looked again at the face, the lips, the eyes of my beloved who I was supposed to meet tomorrow night when the new moon shone on the tombstone in our churchyard. Did you say she's dead? I asked, barely recognizing my own voice. Years and years ago, her name is written on the back along with the date, my aunt informed me. I took the portrait out of its faded red velvet case and read the inscription on the back, Susanna Kingsnorth, Ob, 1713. This happened in 1813. My uncle finished his story. What happened? I asked eagerly. I think I had a seizure, my uncle replied slowly. In any case, I was very sick. And you missed seeing her on the grave during the new moon? I miss seeing her on the grave during the new moon. And you never saw her again? I never saw her again. But, Uncle, do you really think? Can the dead? Was she? Did you? My uncle pulled out his pipe and filled it. It happened a long time ago. He said, many, many years ago, 
Stories of an old man, my dear. Stories of an old man. Don't take them seriously. He lit the pipe and smoked quietly for a moment or two, then continued, But I know what youth and happiness mean, despite being lame and having the girls make fun of me. The End Thank you for listening. See you in the next videos.